Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I am Abdul Ghani, and I will be moderating this session. Welcome to our topic on military presence in the Horn of Africa. Horn of Africa is known for its geopolitical strategy. It connects Africa to the oil-rich region of Middle East. It hosts essential shipping routes, which is crucial to the global economy. This, it has become a target for foreign military interventionists throughout history, and it has increased in modern times. So our, now, I will call uh, uh, our guest one by one. I will start with uh, and welcome Desta Kase to come to the stage. He is a former Ethiopian diplomat who served in the Middle East and specifically Yemen. He is a researcher and lecturer in politics, peace, and security of Horn of Africa and Middle East. The author is as well the author of the book entitled with the conflict entitled with the conflict in Yemen and it is shadows in the Horn of Africa. Uh, now I as well will welcome Adam Omar Abdikadir. He is a researcher in political science at the Center for Studies and Research of Djibouti. He is the director of the Institute of Political and Strategic Studies. His, his research is focus on political, uh, political aspect in Djibouti and the job politics of the Horn of Africa. And lastly, I will welcome Samawil, Dr. Samawil Tafera. He is assistant professor at Addis Ababa University Center for African and Asian Studies. He is a former advisor to the Ministry of Peace. He is an expert on transregional policy and governance affairs, cross-border mobility, migration, and refugee. So if I share with you uh, the plan is that for the first 40 minutes, each panelist will have about 14 minutes to present his perspective. There will be 15 minutes follow-up questions, and you will have half an hour, uh, I mean 30 minutes for question and answer sessions with the guest. Now uh, I, will meet, I will give the speaker to Mr. Testa. Welcome. Sabah uh, Nur. As uh, have been mentioned, I have been serving in different offices, uh, mainly affiliated with a security kind of uh, perspective. And later on, I deployed as a diplomat in Yemen, and I served more than six years. And it was really fascinating, even if it is so many challenges in Yemen, deployment in Yemen, but it was really uh, a kind of fascinating kind of thing. So uh, having said this, uh, I'm very much delighted to be here in Somaliland and to share my uh, ideas concerning the foreign military presence on the Horn of Africa. Uh, when you are uh, talking about the foreign military presence in the Horn of Africa, particularly we are going to deal about the uh, Chinese and the China uh, in respect of in this in respect of the China and the American presence in the Horn of Africa, including the American allied groups as well. Uh, as perspective, when we are talking about the security issue in the Horn of Africa, particularly in the presence of foreign military presence in this area, we should have to be 
familiar about the security complex in this region. That security complex in this region might have a sort of three characteristics. The first is the security complex, which is related with the uh, Gulf countries, which is Middle Eastern countries, which had been uh, discussed yesterday by our colleagues. Uh, the other one is the South Asian security complex. It matters a lot because the complex, the security complex, what is happening in the Horn of Africa, we should have to consider the GCC Middle East security complex, what they are going, what they are actively engaged in this area. The same thing, the South Asian security complex and the China and the US and its allies security complex. So what is going on in this region? We should have to categorize Middle Eastern and the uh, Gulf countries security complex, the uh, South Asian security complex at the same time, the China and the US security co complex. What we are going to do for this uh, discussion is that, as I have mentioned, particularly the military presence on the Horn of Africa in relating to the US and its allies versus China. The military presence in this area, it has its own pushing and pulling factor. We can, we can uh, categorize as a pushing and as a pulling factor. The pushing factor is that, as, as uh, we mentioned in different discussion, this is because, you know, the 21st centuries, we can say that as if it is an epoch of 40 age. Years before, in 20th century, there was a sort of uh, trainway kind of uh, epoch, and the coming 20, 21st century is going to be 40 age. Uh, geographical importance of the Bab el Mandeb Strait, gateway to the uh, uh, to the uh, inter international trade routes, uh, sea passage, piracy, terrorism, migration, and among others, have been as a pushing factor to the presence of the foreign military forces in this area. At the same time, geographic, geopolitical location, which is viable kind of area, which is Horn of Africa is a place which is located, a very important route, Swiss Canal, Aden Gulf, and the Red Sea. So this is a very crucial for the international trade route. Then because of this, this should have to be the security of this uh, area is a concern for those who are nowadays reflect their presence as a military force in the Horn of Africa. Uh, the other pushing factor is because of lack of peace and stability in this area. Horn of Africa is a volatile. There is lack of sustainable development and sustainable peace and stability in this area. So to maintain and to uh, guarantee their local, local peace and stability, they should have to come and then they should have to control and contribute their, uh, their share, I can say. They should have to come to this area because they, are, they do have a sort of potential threat in this area. The factors which I can reflect as if they are as a pulling factor, Security of the Bab el Mandeb is under threat. As you know, uh, in Somalia, Yemen, and other areas, and, and there was a sort of a strong threat about the piracy and terrorism. Because of all these factors, the main uh, superpowers, including the, the newcomers, are they should have to come across this area and to make, to make peace and stability in this area. Even the Arab world, they should have to have a sort of competition to make peace and stability because the only market they have is oil. If 
oil is going to be uh, sold in this area or transported in this area, they should have to make it peace and stable this, this Red Sea and Babel Mandem. So they are forced to be around their military forces. Uh, the other thing is fear in the maritime security gap. There was, as I have mentioned before, there was a gap. Piracy had been hyper. Terrorism had been also hyper. Then, in order to fulfill this gap, the uh, coming of the new forces to the uh, Horn of Africa is viable. Um, the strong, which had been which had been, which I have, which we are going to discuss in this point is that also the uh, shifting of policy of the uh, American policy, which had been after the uh, Trump administration. Trump had been against, against those who had been NATO and the presence of the U.S. around this area. And later on, there was a sort of gap. This gap is not going to be fulfilled by the uh, forces by the Horn of Africa. To fulfill this gap, the presence of the foreign military for, uh, forces had been uh, oversurfaced. There was also a gap of leadership. The America had been a leader to maintain peace and stability in this area with its allies. But after uh, Trump administration, there was a sort of loose kind of uh, leadership to fulfill that gap. Uh, so many military forces have been coming to take over and to fulfill these gaps. Um, the other strong point has been also the Yemen conflict. There was strong conflict in Yemen and to make peace and stability in that area, I mean in the Swiss Canal and the Red Sea. Uh, the UAS, which is assisting for uh, logistical kind of thing for the uh, Saudis, um, so, because of the Yemen crisis, the military force had been deployed here. Tension in the Strait of Hormuz. The Strait of Hormuz, uh, which is located around the uh, Iran, in between the Iran and the Gulf countries, actually, there is a tension between the Iran and the Saudis and the Arab world. Then, because of this tension. They should have to have uh, divert their oil to the Red Sea. In order to divert that Red Sea also, they should have to maintain peace and stability in this area. So their coming to the Horn of Africa could be considered as a push, as a pulling factor. The other very important kind, the uh, Belt and Road Initiative, parallel with uh, parallel with the Emirati Spring spring of ports, they are competing to have their presence. The Chinese, they are aspiring to have ports in the Horn of Africa. The same thing, the United Arab Emirates as, as well, they, they are planning to have their own ports in the Horn of Africa because this uh, Belt and Road Initiative doesn't ha touch any Arab world and then it is crossing the concerns of Africa. The uh, port, I mean, the spring of ports as well, they should have to touch the spring of ports which is located in the Horn of Africa. What is the impact? About their impact, there is a source of blessings and curse. As blessings, finance, investment, and foreign direct investment is booming. Alliance for security, counter-terrorism, piracy, Infrastructure development had been, uh, we can, I can consider it as if, uh, as a blessing. The curse is currently dynamics of the U.S.-China rivalry is unfolding. Because of this tension, there might be a sort of problems in peace and stability in this area. Um, regional peace and stability might have also you know, countries which are actively working in the ports of the Horn of Africa, they might have a sort of alliance with political elites which maintain, which can be able to maintain their interests. 
their alliance might be related with, not based on the strategic interests of the country, might be allied based on their personal interests of the, those leaders who are in the Horn of Africa. So it might be democratic reversal kind of thing might be uh, appeared. Um, I will wrap up the, in the ne next uh, session, I mean in the next, uh, after the question, then the way forward will be reflected later. Thank you. Thank you to Mr. Desta for the informative uh, presentation. Now I will give the speaker to Mr. Uh, Adam uh, Ali to present. Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For the Lubakil Mudud Bakorani of Somali, see the Nick Sahib Ali Bashali with Hiyi. Kadimna, presentation Kago and Nugu and the Fingris, but no high presentation Kay. Or to Haku Frasana in an Halkan Dadwala Alaya, Somalian, Slana, in an. In an halkan nuso mazuman, magala dan hargisa. Dat kare so malna di dat kare jubuti. Kordo dat walala, dat walala wiyo no bokor ki bala watan illa sotor. Dat kare jubuti wadat kaso jeda so malna. Sada kordo kart. Anu wuli gemani man hargisa. Hamar man tigi jere basaso garuwe. Sot kaku dana. Koshkali day gini si sot. سومالند ما نمیدهی، لکن قیبها هوسه پنجان که میدوه هرگزی سمسوگاری. لکن سنت میگوریس، سنت میگوریس هرگزی سمر کرد ماهی مر حقایقی ده دیسوم ما نمیدهی. وح وح الله ویحی لیگش یکی انجرین، هرگزی سلیوشی گی نونک یو وح کلود وح کلود آف سنبا. ارتانوی بدش فکر کنی که قبی بذکری سومالند یه دست هرگزی سه آبی کبدش. وحوي وحياب بطن عن أنا ونسكو أورن في كرودة كله ناس ناس ودي بتنبان مرة كار كود ما درت هذا نسكو أرك ناس كو فيرنا إن دقف كله يعني نسكو فيرنا مرة كأنا وقت ضد ولا على نهي ضد دنيير وسوق ريوريس وما نادتين إن تسفي عن نوفاتين هذا ربتين أنا دوف دوف يعني مطي حاجة يجي مهورين فهمت فهمت ده هرجيسة كاي شيء سمعنا دوف كهور تبي حاجة يستور دخلت به مرك وان جعل هذا مشان إن أكو صور الله لفتو ديكو فرنسا بفرصة دي سيسين أكو صور لفتو أكو تلجرة تضبط الله صحابه هل كان لفتو ديان ولا إنه ودا ليربتين فكرة ده إن نقدر نعيش إن يدك ككلا إن عيدات كلا ليهين هو أسكتاية إنك فرصة هلا نجبوتي هاي ما دو وصور دويننا ودل كيني لواط مركز أكو فرحة نهاية إن تامن ورنا أكو بلابي وأنا أقول لكم أن أي شخص يحب أن يكون هناك 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 أي شخص يحب أن the day after the country's independence, 1977. France, a colonial power having colonized Djibouti with the approval of the Djibouti Authority, decided to maintain a contingent of several thousand soldiers and has it and has at its disposal various 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 military troops. Country countries present at, uh, today in Djibouti uh, with, uh, with military base. France, United States of America, Japan, uh, European Union, now finish, uh, Italy and China. And other countries likely to establish a military base in Djibouti in the future, like Russia, uh, Saudi Arabia and Turkey. Uh, in this presentation, we will discuss three points. First point is the context of the installation of this base in Djibouti rapidly. Second point, the advantages. And the third one, the disadvantages. And finally, to conclude on the challenge of their, of this foreign military presence in Horn of Africa. For France, this is part of its policy 
of maintaining political influence or inf political influence over its former colony, like what it did in West Africa and the Sahel, I, and its former uh, colonies, which has since obtained their independence nearly 20 years before Djibouti. And this, with the result that we know today, and the rejection of France in recent years that you observe in these countries. The presence of France in Djibouti also has a strategic objective to allow France to safeguard its prestige and has a great power in the world, and especially in this part of the globe. From the day after independence, the question, the question of the viability of the Republic of Djibouti in this hostile environment in many uh, uh, aspects arose with equity. Economically, the country has the country had no known natural resource that could be exploited to support a population of 300,000. The drought and the composition of the soil made agriculture impossible. How even the, culture, the cultural obstacle of a population of nomadic pastoralists and their lack of connection to the land will be overcome. Furthermore, the human capacity necessary for the economic and social development of the country of the country were lacking and the vast majority were either educated or illiterate in terms of regional politics. Djibouti was the subject of grievance from the two river power in the Horn of Africa in this time, Ethiopia and Somalia. The first has always considered Djibouti territory has an integral part of its own and considered itself on territory to recover it has Soon, soon, as soon as the French presence and dead. As for the second, it was simply a matter of satisfying its hegemonic need to build Greater Somalia with its five natural components, which are former Italian Somali, former British Somalia, Djibouti, and uh, north, north, northeastern province of Kenya. Despite the political declaration on both sides, of abandoning annexionist ambition regarding Djibouti, no one gave them the slightest credit in this time. <coughs> the Republic of Djibouti sealed from independence with the former colonized power, colonizing power, a defense agreement which provide for the maintenance of Djibouti soul, a military contingent with the aim of deterring or even responding to any foreign power challenge cause the territorial integrity of the country. This agreement also allowed France to perpetuate its presence in area whose geographical position has become strategic since the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869 at the southern gateway to the Red Sea and controlling the western side of the Strait of Bab al-Mandab. As a result, the issue of Djibouti viability was partially resolved, but this strategic partnership with France effective until today does not constitute an ironclad guarantee, even less a panacea to all the obstacles they may arise from Djibouti during its evolution. Its evolution. 46 years after its independence, the Republic of Djibouti has gone from being a, a vulnerable country, a historic mistake, to a full-fledged strategic partner. You know uh, that after the September 11, uh, 2001, the United States were attacked. Uh, the recently, the relentless war fought by the American against the terrorists has led the Pentagon to think about setting up a military base in Djibouti soil. This you know, the United States created the Combined Joint Tax Joint Task Force for the whole of Africa. Uh, composed of soldier, sailor, and airman of Inder, the United American Command. Uh, the objective of this anti-terrorist coalition is to prevent terrorists from escaping American, mil American military operation in Afghanistan and finding refuge, refuge in Yemen or Somalia. Two country plagued in this time, plagued in this, in this time by, by Islamic, Islamic terrorists as was the case during the war of Afghanistan, 1979-1889, pitting the Soviet Red Army against the Afghan Mujahideen and the foreign sympathizers. So the fight against piracy 
of the coast of Somalia in the Gulf of Aden and in the Indian Ocean has also led many naval military forces to request maritime facilities in Djibouti and to establish on its soil, in some cases, logistic and military bases uh, in return for diplomatic advantages for Djibouti. Since December 2008, the Council of European Union has launched the European Naval Military Operation called AU NAFOR, uh, NAFOR Somalia, operation at, uh, known as uh, Operation Atalanta, Atalanta Operation, which initially had more than 1,200 people, uh, patrol aircraft, and has a facility, logistic in Djibouti, within the French military base. For their part, the United States set up in January 2009 the Combined Tax Task Force uh, 151, CTF 151, a multinational force against against the piracy in the American command. Uh, joining the effort also naval force military deployed by certain countries, namely China, India, Pakistan, Malaysia, Russia, and Turkey, have settled in Djibouti. Some facilities, huh? not bases in this time. In addition, Japan has a military base in Djibouti with a staff of nearly 200 people intended for the fight against piracy. Also, Singaporean force uh, with a strength of uh, 30 people spanned the three mountains in Djibouti. The Italian arrived in the wake of this European anti piracy operation, but maintained their presence even after the end of the Atalanta operation on an individual basis. The strategic interest of Djibouti has continued to grow over the past two decades, as evidenced by the military installations of several European powers, the United States and China which inaugurated its first military base in Africa in August 2017. For China, it, it is a question of consolidating its prestige and its status as a world power and, uh, of, of, and for ensuring the evacuation of nationals itself in the region and uh, preventing an episode like the setbacks of the evacuation of its national in Libya in 2011. Uh, when Gaddafi fall, fell. So the advantage, second point, the advantage. Finish already? Okay. So let me, let me finish with the advantage. Uh, the Republic of Djibouti has never worn the nickname that the international press has given it for several years. Strategic aid, military and security aid, and the country ambition have never been so close to uh, to materializing, namely to become a logistic and uh, commercial platform, the Singapore of East Africa, for the government of Djibouti. It is a question of putting the fruit of the privileged geographic position of the country at the service of socio-economic development for the Djiboutian population and taking advantage of the political benefit that such presence will provide. Direct uh, beneficial, uh, financial benefit, the presence on its own territory, or it's in its territory of foreign military force has several advantages for Djibouti. First of all, there are diplomatic gain from its, but this gaining visibility of international level and by forcing more useful cooperation link for its socio-economic development. Secondly, this process will be a guarantee of security for Djibouti by reducing the budgetary burden and the effort made by but made for its own external security in a turbulent and volatile religion, uh, region. Uh, security, direct contribution to the defense of the territorial integrity, indirect contribution, training, advice, donation, purchase of military uh, equipment, modernization, and capacity building of the security and defense forces of, cert of certain countries like Djibouti, Somalia, and Ethiopia. Multifaceted cooperation, development or pa of a partnership and economic, international visibility, improvement of its image, credibility, attractiveness for foreign direct investment. Thank you. Yeah, let, let me start. I just would like to put a disclaimer first. Like my two uh, colleagues have started and described in detail uh, foreign military bases and their advantages and disadvantages, right? And the pull and push factors <coughs> that contributed to the advantage and disadvantage of those bases in the Horn of Africa, bringing in examples from Djibouti and uh, 
from the surrounding. Like my, <coughs> I would, uh, there is a traditional way of uh, uh, looking at military bases from the perspectives of physical infrastructures that are put in place in countries with access to seas. So my way of looking at milita foreign military presence would be uh, in, in, the in the form of foreign um, military interests through military campaigns and some elements in, in our particular region. And I'll give two examples from Sudan and Somaliland around this area and see the, the causes and the consequences and the potentials for more instability in our region. So I know that uh, economic benefits, like the provision of port services and also strategic alliances and partnerships to deal with some uh, terrorist elements, fundamentalist groups in the region, can be one of the greater causes for countries to host military units, apart from the economic benefits and interests that the country has to drive some, some uh, 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 resources and financial uh, uh, benefits. Peacekeeping could be included in this part. Fight against terrorism, safeguarding national and international uh, issues, security issues, political issues, economic issues can all be part and parcel of having military bases, promoting more cooperation in the security sector. But also, there are also, on the flip side, there are also other challenges, major challenges of having military bases in our region, particularly very volatile and politically dynamic uh, region. And one could be increased regional tensions among countries. A very good example to this would be the Russia-Ukraine war. And Ukraine joining NATO would mean giving more spaces for NATO, putting Russia cornered and vulnerable to further attacks. Likewise, the presence of many, many conflicting, sometimes cooperating forces in Djibouti can, and also in Somalia can be also seen from that perspective. Because there are no rules and regulations that guide and regulate host countries when they decide to invite foreign military bases in their sovereign uh, interests, sovereign territories. What does it mean for Djibouti to host all those forces on the part of Ethiopia, on the part of Somalia, on the part of Eritrea, Kenya? Have there been enough consultations? Are there rules and regulations in IGAD or in the whole in East Africa, among East African community members in the African Union to regulate that, to guide that? So these are the kind of issues that are very much worrying and concerning, creating more distrust between countries in the whole of Africa, limiting the war rules for cooperation. Another would be proxy conflicts and war. Look at what's happening in Yemen. Interest from Saudi Arabia, interest from Iran has destroyed the country brought into context untold deliveries and humanitarian crisis in the region. We also affected other regions who are on the recipient side of migrants. Again, we can also see challenges with regards to uh, promoting causes for sovereignty from the side of Somalia and provision of a military Port and space being taken as a, as a prerequisite to demand and to solicit such a request from countries like the US, the Somaliland Partnership Act that was signed two years ago in March 2021, if I'm not mistaken, could be a very good example of that. And had really Somaliland also looked into evaluating the merits and demerits of what's included in it, is also a question that needs to be clearly answered. The implication of Taiwan and the obligation laid by the U.S. on Somaliland to stand together against any intrusions and interests against Taiwan is also another big controversial issue that needs to be highlighted and discussed. There are also some socio-ecological phases of it. I mean, the imbalances created 
on the local communities from increased competition and increased cost of living because some people can offer to pay and some others they don't. This can be also associated and tied with military-based development-induced displacement within the, within the countries that are hosting the bases. And again, generally elsewhere, like coming from Japan, from uh, Okinawa, understanding all the military base politics and controversies between the US and uh, Japan commoners, the Japan people, I can also see pollution, greenhouse gas emission from the exercises, land degradation, and issues of uh, environmental deg degradation in general uh, being real causes <coughs> of having and hosting uh, military bases in the region. But these days, as I have clearly indicated, military having fo foreign presence is not manifested through a physical building physical infrastructures that host military bases. Powerful states are competing in military technologies. You have drones, nuclear proliferation, cyber war, proxy wars, artificial intelligence, media campaigns. All these can be taken as a form of milita foreign, foreign military presence, foreign security and intelligence presences in our region. To just give you a good example, starting with Sudan, I think generally first, Horn countries need to regulate and rethink on their foreign policies with regards to hosting military bases plus military interests in their sovereign territories and in the region. Look, look at what's happening in Sudan. I mean, since 2017, when Bashir was in power, the Wagner Group was involved in supporting Bashir's activities and measures and interventions in Darfur, the rest of the region of Darfur. Since then, the Wagner uh, Group has supplied arms, brought in mercenaries from other countries, and untold stories of misery and humanitarian violations and crisis has happened. And then after the downfall of the Bashir government in Sudan, uh, the Wagners continued supporting Hamdan Dagalo, Hemeti, and in the split between Burhan and Hemeti, and in the current crisis that we are seeing and witnessing, which affected the majority of the countries in the Horn of uh, Africa, these foreign military companies have played and are playing now significant uh, contribution. Over almost 5 million people were displaced as of August 25, this month, according to UN OCHA, UNHCR uh, reports. Over 378,000, if I have to mention some figures, of people have arrived in Chad, over 287 uh, in Egypt, 237 in Sudan, over 40,000 in Ethiopia, and about 20,000 people migrated to Central African Republic. All those countries have all similar problems, by the way. And this is also fueling and adding to the conflict that we had in my country, in Ethiopia. Ethiopia bordering Sudan. And the problems that we have in the rest of now region of Amhara region of the state, which is directly connected to the Sudan, the supply of arms, the supply of foreign elements, the, the, the encroachment of foreign elements, is happening as, as I speak now. Have you ever imagined the impact of this, given that as far from Senegal, Cameroon, Chad, Central African Republic, Libya, and now Sudan, and now partly Ethiopia, and now here in the last hundred conflict and all those issues related to Al-Shabaab in Somaliland are creating a connected belt of conflict that's affecting the whole region. And imagine the significant, the, the, kind, the kind of humanitarian crisis that's going to be to happen and how, what is the role of also our institutions to resolve problems and challenges that came out of military presence in the region with weak, weaker regard, with little trust among our members. I, it worries me a lot. The way the future worries me a lot. So we have to be very careful on this. Coming to Somaliland again, <clears throat> And building on what I've been saying on the partnership, Somaliland Partnership Act between, signed between Somaliland government, the Republic of Somaliland and the United States, is the, the recent rumor of the Blackwaters, a military company implicated with United Arab Emirates and Taiwan, 
base in around the cost. What implications, potential implications is it going to bring that we'll, we'll see in the future? But we have to be very careful of this kind of invitations and foreign military presence and interests in our region because they would pose a great challenge to the survivor. We have to be very candid and frank, I would say. Uh, <clears throat> so what does this imply should be a question that we all need to think and try to respond because foreign military presence, not a military base, in, even in Somaliland, is not a long history. In 1988, I know, I know most of the Somalilanders here are youth. Probably I was also a five-year student by then, five years old boy by then. But we have records telling us that Ziad Bari has hired South African mercenaries in 1988 to bomb Hargesa that killed and cost the lives of more than 50,000 Somalilanders. So are we going to repeat this exercise again? Shouldn't be we pausing for a moment and think what potential implications that's going to bring to an already volatile region, which is the Horn of Africa. So these are the issues that should keep us awake. Uh, and I'm not going to say more. I would be concluding because I would want to give more spaces during the question and answer sessions to respond. So with weaker regard, protracted internal conflicts, failed states in the region, military coups, which has become characteristic features of our region, and also <clears throat> uh, other challenges, other fertile grounds for non-cooperation, instability, weak, weak, in, weak environmental issues like that put us vulnerable to foreign interventions through humanitarian aid, humanitarian development, a weak resilience to climate change impacts through droughts and other issues would, would keep our region very vulnerable and very fertile for the presence of negative military foreign presence uh, in our regions and in our countries. The way forward, I, I, I think we need to sit down and discuss, but uh, what we should do will be strengthening regional economic institutions and also regional political institutions such as IGAD uh, to strengthening and put more effort to build more trust among our leaders and promote people-to-people -people relationships and also put in place some transboundary and transnational cooperative mechanisms and modalities that would best guide and regulate uh, decision making over hosting and also over inviting uh, foreign uh, military elements into our region. This is what I would like to say. But before I conclude, I don't know how famous it is in Somaliland, but there is a very famous Somali proverb. Uh, and it says, I don't know what, I don't know it in Somali, yeah, but like I would say it in English, I'll try to translate it. I'm not sure if I translate it well. If you would want to give your stick to someone, you should give it to someone that you trust, or you should make sure that you give it to someone very weak because you won't get difficulty getting back, getting it back. So this is the kind of situation that I see with military, foreign military presence and our state of affairs with the whole member countries. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Samuel. So now, uh, I'll just ask, one follow-up question to each uh, panelist. <coughs> so I will start with uh, Esther. There are challenges and opportunities. Hosting objective base is not all unpleasant, but there is always the question of balancing between powers. So how countries in the Horn of Africa can balance their stance with competitive powers? Thank you. Uh, how we are going to balance is that first, uh, what we should have to think is that uh, the objections are become to secure repeatable terms with external actors, regional actors, and at the same time within the interstate actors in the whole of Africa. We should have some objection. And we should have to balance with each other. We should have to know which one. 
we should have to negotiate to secure uh, our equitable terms with all actors in the Horn of Africa at the same time, those states within the Horn of Africa as well. Um, usually I'm using such kind of terms. Look, for example, the one who discovered aeroplane to fly over, you should have to be optimistic. At the same time, there might be a sort of crash. Those who thinking about, those who are, I mean those who have discovered airplane, they are optimists. Those who are discovered parachute, they are petty, pessimists. But they do have their own contribution for the community. So sometimes we should have to be think, tactical alliance we should have to have. At the same time, we should have to have strategic partnership with countries. And we should have to have also a mechanism, de-conflict mechanism. We have different actors in our region, so we should have to have establish a sort of how we are going to manage such kind of, kind of conflict of interest, those who are residing in our um, horror of Africa. I can say it's such a way. Thank you. Now, uh, I'll ask Mr. Adam, uh, Chabuti has the military bases for the babies. Uh, what is the takeaway from this process of contracting with other states and hosting opposing powers without interfering with this local politics? Uh, military bases ولكن ولكنني ويقول xeer <laughs> لكن 
لكن وحوي قف كما درت بحر حر بجوجا رجاس مش حر شيء بجوجا روح كم بدا سياسة داخلية أي وضعك إني دحكي وح كم كم بدا وضعنا تجار كنا إني أريمه وين دحكي دقال بقى سؤال زوما هي توبي تقرأ دقال بقى سؤال ما ودقت دقال تسوق ولا توصي إني لب هني ب إني دل جلي بنا صور حجارة نجاس قبعة دل زوما تذكى جيس كافر جيس قبعة إن اللي يدا دنيك جنب بيجا يا خلاص خلاص فرط الله في عطر فضة لح بغلاء كل سديد بغلاء كل تجارة كل دماغ تاني وقت تاني رح داعي تو بيو كداعي سوما بدأت جنب بيكون حجرى أنا جاس قمار نسوا ما أنا جاس كفيلم بقى ناس قمار ما كان وقت حيس ده اللوجة دوية الفرط اللوجة كله قد كم مرة جنب بيجا واحد معنا صوب بيرنس مجرد واحد كان يري رجع مريكة كأير ربي إن رجع مش اللي يريد الله صفتان واحد كان يري ما ما ده هدي جيلا ما كان ده سبتين جيلا لكن أنا جاس خلاص وقالين أحمر أي نقطة دو جبت ووضع سفرا هنا كسر حارش عالم يجي واحد مين قف كتير مرتبة نوي سما ورد إسكا هذا هنا نرى نبريت عليه دقال في توبيا هنا ده حجلان جبوتي يا مريكة كو دبوي ما كده هذا مرد حجل كريسي ما كده واحد لكن هو كده دولة في توبيا كنت قال تماي سو أردن وفكر سو ده دي كده جبوتي يو كسو ده ود دولة شرعية سنة عالمية أو هو كده كنت قال قلي سو سو شرعية سنة وسو يمشي في دولة كله وحنو قبعة هنا ده عنو ما هذا، أما دجا على كوكش، أما ما درت إن هذا إن وحكي على كوكش، مركز صعب، كوكش يلقى بوسط دجا، لكن اسم مرينجان كا، وحنا نلقى مركز عدد حق اللي كاريسا، وحنا نلقى كده عيوض هذا جارك، زميني مجو، وضعك الصومالي هنا، الشباب لا دجا لين كي، يبور عاد بدل كلا دجا لين كي، هدي أي دت أجنبية، أو وضعنا ذا كسر هذا، أي نكير مراكب، أي كل دجا طبعاً، هاي راسية، هرت أنا بسكوت دعني، ما أود بعلن، جبوت الصومالي على سكوت دجي ما أود بعلن. أود مل أنا بعبر كذا قلت إنه أود مل هنا كوسي يمشي ندرونه إنت هذا والعقل السيني هذا بالله ما نمشي كارنا قوة تركه هو حي ما وقت جاس تمس النقار ما كريم مركع رج ضد كان أجنبي جاء إيه جوجا سدا أنا هو استعمال أنا جن واحد نطه ولين أجنبي ودب بكون كان يوم ما ورا أنا هو وحنا نمشي نهري جبوتي ضد كأجنبي جاء جوجا فأيدو يدو نعو في عين هاي وحنية كمجرنو فكرة كمجرنو وحوي ورني كان وحبو وطاع صما وحبطوا دبتين كاس وقاري تطلق جار كاجي وراها إنك سو قاري دبتوا إسأل وقف في إذا إسأل الحين عن يلا إذا ماذا سومالي لا تقاتل مع شباب وجبت واحد وطن مرة صم بديدو إذا ماذا بدأ أي حد وحسن شيء توبي أجل الله وحيد بدأ من هذه توبي إذا بدأ وحسن تصم إذا كان فرنسيس كي جبت جوا تابرة جوا تروح تابرة أنا أنا قاعد أقول ما ما رح أحمل أوديس إن إذا مدينة جيس كأفريقيا أود أي سيان تذكر هل كان جوجا نمول بمركو ربو هوس بوجه فيدي استا هوس لكن إذا مركو اللوري ما إن وح كلا لا أخر يمشي معه مركو أوين أنا وأنا غنا دتسكو كلسون دتو كرنا يا one two three ويا دنتين دتين نايل عشان أنا كوي عشان بتذكر جوجا كاس وكاد أنا سيد مسمعوني I will ask what are the motivations or motives Behind the U.S. and Gulf states' involvement in Berbera. What That's the state of political affairs, political affairs we have in the world. I'm talking. I was I was responding to the question, but no one is listening. <laughs> You know, yeah, that's the, that's the problem. Like, it's very tough to answer this question. I mean, they definitely they will have some political and economic interests. But you know, this is stretching from the port of Hormuz in in Iran to the Suez Canal. You know, this is a big maritime zone, maritime area where the majority of the world's, the bulk of the world's trade activity happens. And this is where we have uh, the most, the, the biggest challenges that threaten. A global collective security hub, drug trafficking, uh, human trafficking, arms dealers, and the proliferation of arms from the different businesses that we have in the region. Uh, so we have trade, cooperation, we have strategic alliances, that's uh, the most important trade routes, right? And trade routes where we have uh, strategic choke points globally. So there, there always remains an interest in this part of the world. So there is always a competition to control, to have a control over this maritime zone to safeguard national and interests of strategic partners. 
with America, with uh, US, China, with Taiwan, with anyone who is interested in this kind of They uh, So, uh, we, we, we could expect that. Since the partition of Africa during the Berlin Congress, when we have a bipolar world order, and now with emerging new economic and military powers, and the world changing multipolar, Africa has always remained at the recipient of it. I mean, I'm not, blame, I'm not shifting the blame to the rest of the world because I believe that there is a lot that we haven't done to ensure that we are the best competitors, we are the best uh, the countries who can, who can, say, we can ensure a safer, a better, economically stronger region in this part of uh, the world. So uh, there, is no answer, there is no clear answer, I would say, but the issue of building a military base in Barbara came very recently, particularly after the signing of the Somaliland partnership part between Somaliland and the US. And I can understand the intentions. Somaliland has always been here to get a recognition from the international community that I expect and I, I believe so. But also Somaliland needs to have something to offer to its neighbors rather than bringing in, inviting in foreign military powers and bases around. Because the security of Ethiopia is well, first and foremost dependent on a stable Somali land. And likewise, without a strong and stable democracy and security and peace in Ethiopia, Somali, it's very, it will be very difficult for Somaliland to be an independent, recognized and stable democracy. So, very difficult to answer this question. Still. Thank you, Dr. Samuel. Now it is now for five minutes conclusion and answer session. So please, uh, you have the right to ask your question to either all of uh, panelists or only one of them. So just name if you are asking a specific uh, guest. So, oh, very question. Yeah, yeah, no, that is yeah. Shall I turn it to be my son? Okay. Okay. I like it how Ambassador surprised the Putin and putting back this military presence, military presence in the region. Uh, yes, I agree with you actually, this video is very complex, but always we discuss on the interest of the external powers in the region. But my question is, can we analyze the issue from the interest of our end? With a regional end, I mean, uh, with the interest of our region, can we come up a regional agenda that we can negotiate with the global powers to, uh, to deal with our interest without retaining our potential and wealth by uh, instead of uh, coming up, I mean, uh, negotiating the powers collectively with our interest as regional agenda? Thank you. My question is almost to our master. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Farhan. I would like to ask uh, the panelists uh, only one quick question. Uh, you have mentioned that to have the military presence in the Horn of Africa, that the institutions and the government, specifically the government institutions, should have the capacity to have regulations and uh, rules that they can have uh, facilitate that military basis. 
so my question is that we have that kind of capacity uh, to regulate uh, both internationally and locally the effect of the military bases uh, from the powers for your family. Transport in this region. It means that we should 
those actors they should have to maintain peace and stability in this area. So they we should have to consider as state purpose. Based on and we should have also uh, share the ramifications, what is going on if something happens around this area as well with the other actors. Having said this, is a under of IU, IU Swan, and that is the other army. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would only briefly respond to the question. I, I think it was raised by Cass. Yes, that's that's a possibility. Because I, I myself was recently uh, reported in an initiative which was launched by IGAT to uh, kind of put uh, some uh, framework on issues related to transboundary uh, security issues within the IGAT member states in the whole of uh, Africa and also to discuss and regulate and create in, in which checks are framed in the form of uh, aiming at framing a kind of uh, framework whereby all IGAT member states will submit and subscribe. But briefly saying like we cannot rule out completely the uh, the broader issues of security and military cooperation. This can be discussed for their merits and demerits and agreed the terms can be agreed. That's that's what I can say. Because this is a world where there are commonly shared interests, political, economic, cultural, military and those need to make alliances accordingly. And that has always pros and cons. And those pros and cons, particularly where member states make with other global and regional partners, need to be discussed and to be framed in a way that they don't have consequences, negative consequences to them. Otherwise, you cannot rule out whether issues of security and military cooperation. About the conference, I talked about this already on the presentation. This diplomatic game, activity, direct competition training, capacity building for the Russian military forces, but also for Somalia and Tokyo of cooperation. This is an advantage, but a disadvantage. German Turkish is managing rivalry with much of the power. It's complicated because management of hostility, management of incident, accident, sometimes incident between them and sometimes accident. You remember we see that a missile that's captured from a Spanish ship more in the port of Djibouti without causing any damage. Uh, loss of impact contribution. This is another advantage. You know, uh, those foreign military presence, they doesn't pay tax, uh, they doesn't pay uh, their taxes. But this is uh, lost uh, for the booty, uh, uh, the booty. Uh, their contribution, their financial contribution, is less than 10% 10, 10 of GDP of the booty, something like 8 or 9. So, uh, the primary interest of the booty is not for the national. And environmental and health consequences. This is the other advantage of the presence of those uh, foreign people. Uh, but sometimes also, the diplomatic is at their school with the labels of others. Mark, I want to give you a hand to do more. At the end, see the what had the progress in the past weeks, what in to level professional level. Papa, what is your answer? What are you doing? What are you doing? 
ay matawakan ng China, marahin ang tanda na Philippines, in the Philippines. So, man, ang mga tili, ang mga tuk, at ito ka sugar, wak mahadam sa ito. So, man, buti o hotan, alam ka nga, ito ang sayo, hey, na kaya pa kong sandwich na, ito ang mga, ito ang sayo, ito ang sayo, nagin, at alam, kasulit ba kasarap, ang tinubut, Tegang tak, sulit bagi sarang jar bisa. Oh, dewa tu bukan lihat. Kita harus cakap ni bang. Karena aku pasti kalau bapa ayah aku bukan lihat. Nana buat mel buat hati kamu. Ayah nak tanya. Ayah nak susu sebab orang bapa nak sambil kasih. Nak susu sebab orang bapa nak sambil kasih. Dewa tu dia nak buat hati kamu. Dewa tu dia tak nak tahu dia nak. Dewa tu dia berdua dengan kamu. Tanya dia tu dia kata hebat. Berapa kali? Eh, kita dewa tu nak tanya. Kita nak tanya. Dan aja ni dia buat mel pulak. Mel mel yang pergi yang pulak. أو بعض رأيك تهلا لو إيش يبنى لا تهلا لو إيوه إيش يدبا أنا ولا حد ذي كارك ده برا دبتوي بدل ما لو تعلم إنه هو يعرف لا أنا أنا وما تسار رجل من رجل 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 عرف كسر هاي ضبط الفروضها ما يقدر حل بدي عادها الفروضها ما يقدر حل دفتر من خلاص قبل أنا هو حد ذي كارك برك الأسبوع صار بدوه لو كنا بدنا فكمية إن مشان كيسكو أو هدي لي ده من بعد أسبوع من Nombor pada detik saya, tak kan? Ia tidak ada di mana. Nombor pada detik saya, wadang buat malam lah, datuk buat. Makanya kalau nak nasional interest orang ramai, nasional interest buat makan. Lepas mas buat malam, kalau dia hari raya jadi kerisin, nombor buat bisu. Nasib firu orang dah video mesti kena pergi. Nasib buat hari raya jadi malam. Najumu di latar rumah, ush, kamu kata macam ni sana mah. Tetapi waktu ini kita semua kita perlu berfikir lagi. Walaupun hadamlo, hanya walaupun dengan hanya walaupun, betul. Jadi kalau kita ini satu dua tiga, kita perlu berfikir lagi. 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 Anu tadi tu mana hai, anu wah anu hai, macam rekam mana hai, anu wah anu hai, hai mana hai, ada ketik pun tu, lama, ada ketik pun ada nasional tu terus ada ketik sangat tegar, ada ketik pun ada, anda tu pasal sujud tu, macam lagi ni macam ada mahu terus saya, saya tak ada tidak sedih macam saya, atau semua, kita ada mahu anda rela, ini Allah ni, hari ini saya, amat emar, rela isma, amat ini nanti tiup dah jadi, amat alas tu terus ramah, ada ada pemilu tu baik, macam tu lagi tu dia orang dia dikurung, dia sebenarnya tak pernah sah. Ama kami itu nampak kami ni kan terasa kita memang sangat teratur nasa. Ama hand nak kotor semua ni untuk kami nasib terang. Ama hand nak kotor. Kita jadi kiamat. Kita yang kami nak kami dari tuh tuh dia orang semua high school. So lari apa dia semua. Alkan orang school kita ni memang sangat kena mati ramai ramai nak kena ramai. Tak apa. Wah sol nak kotor. Wah ya bi. Ida tu kita semua nasib terang. Wah aduh dapat tak? Jom saya asal lagi nasib. Saya asal lagi. Jom kita ayat berdua kita ayat berdua. Tegalu kata ayu orang dulu itu tak bisa. Maka kau ini kau ubah tasok kan? Omar dahalis begini ni, dahalis baik. Toma cerita itu dia. Karena dia buat demi awak kalau awal ni, tu dia bukan latihan ini bukan latihan ini. Tapi kalau dah tu, dia sekarang keluar mampu tak mau mampu. Sudah selesai. Cerita ini kau ibu sudah. Mari pasti kau harus punya terasa. Toma asal apa yang kita sudah ada baca ada kita lihat tu asal. Mari kita asal asal ada baca asal ada semua cerita. Rok rok semua terang, betul betul itu. Nombor mana yang sistem mana terung yang dia akan sistem mai. Asalnya di khatum itu luaran jen, khatum buat bega, apa yang dia buat pasok. Buat dia akan sistem sistem mana asalnya dia akan sistem mana. Kalau kamu lihat dia lekat, boleh kau tak? So dan so dan sok tu salah tu kita tiba lah dengan drama itu terus. Atau asal dua ni. Kau punya semua lu ini kita ikhlas mana itu kita tak tahu sama asal. Hanya apa tu tak soal ni ada kan? Pakai sok kami. Buat apa dia akan soal? Pokok bahan tak, kerjaan lain pun, lagi saya kisah orang ni, bawa sinema ni buat. Nanti aku yang nanti, ni buat apa ni? Ia sebenarnya tu sebenarnya tu, itu kesal dah tua ni lah. Ha, dah hari yang lalu, orang lalu pun terasa, ini orang kita siapa sih? Wah, kami, apa? Nanti saya wujud, tak perlu saya pakai. Jadi boleh lah, dah wujud. Perkara yang lalu, susah orang orang. Yang lalu, yang tak, pasti tak tua. Kadar mana amal orang 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 tua, kita kami orang tua, boleh lah. Tapi bukan apa ni, tapi jenai. Di mana bawa, maha pun mereka dia mati berhak takkan dia punya macam mana itu tak boleh tuju. Apa yang anda mahu fikir? No, kena saya kata semua soal di studio in national interest oleh kita umum, betul. Betul. Oleh kerana kita 
I'm, I'm Gus. Uh, this is fantastic panelists. Actually, I appreciate your discussions and the factors you talked about. Particularly, I like the how Ambassador surprised the Bush and Ambuni factories on this uh, military presence, uh, military presence in the region. Uh, yes, I agree with you. Actually, this region is very complex, but always we discuss on the interest of the external powers to the region. But my question actually is, uh, can we analyze the issue from the interest of our end? With the regional, in, I mean, uh, with the interest of our region, can we come up a regional agenda that we can negotiate with the global powers to, uh, to deal with our interest without retailing our potential and wealth by in, instead of uh, coming up, I mean, in negotiating the powers collectively with our interest as a regional agenda. Thank you. Uh, my name is Farhan. I would like to ask uh, the panelists uh, only one quick question. Uh, you have mentioned that to have the military presence in the Horn of Africa, that the institutions and the government, specifically the government institutions, should have the capacity to have regulations and uh, rules that they can have uh, facilitate that military basis. So my question is that do we have that kind of capacity? From the Middle East, do we have a common interest in this geopolitical location of the border of Africa? Yes, indeed, we have a common interest in maintaining peace and stability of this region is very crucial to every of us, whether we are from the Horn of Africa, whether we are from the superpowers, the coming new uh, regional powers like Emirati or Saudi Arabia. Indeed, those who are coming from, uh, I mean, the international powers, they do have their own conflict of interest. The same thing, they do have conflict of interest between the Gulf states like the Saudis and the Gulf states as well like uh, United Arab Emirates. They are running for their uh, geopolitical interest in this region. So we should have to think and cut what we are having a common interest to have this, this region. Whether they are from the international actors, regional actors within, interstate actors within the whole of Africa. Then having in mind this common interest and balancing the ramification based on the economic, political, and security impacts, then we should have to work on it. As I have mentioned before, nowadays we are not going to work alone unless maybe we are going to. Uh, craft a sort of uh, an African. Okay, we should have to strengthen our regional gathering like IGAD. Different uh, discussions have been delivered yesterday about regional, the strengths of the IGAD, the strengths of the other uh, groupings. So we should have to strengthen this institution as much as we can. And there is also so many possibilities to strengthen, rather than working hard in our difference, we should have to come across with all our common interests, even within states those who are in the world of Africa. Then we should have to strengthen the regional mechanism, as well as with the other actors which are coming for the sake of their strategic interest. Whether we like or not, as I have mentioned before, uh, the coming 21, I mean, in this 21st century, there are a lot of consumption by the community. If the consumption is going to be increased, it means that this international trade is going to have in a big kind of, in a big kind of volume, which is going to be transformed in this region. It means that we should 
those actors they should have to maintain peace and stability in this area. So they we should have to consider as stakeholders. Based on and we should have to also uh, share the ramifications, what is going on if something happened around this area as well with the other actors. Having said this, is a under of IU IU so after it's kind of the other Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I will only briefly respond to the question. I, I think it was raised by Kass. Yes, that's, that's a possibility. Because I, I myself was recently uh, involved in an initiative which was launched by IGAD to uh, kind of put uh, some uh, framework on issues related to transboundary uh, security issues within the IGAD member states in the whole of uh, Africa and also to discuss and regulate and create in, in, which shapes are framing in the form of uh, aiming at framing a kind of uh, framework whereby all IGAD member states would submit and subscribe. But briefly saying, like we cannot rule out completely the uh, the broader issues of security and military cooperation. This can be discussed for their merits and demerits, and agree the terms can be. Added. That's that's what I can say. Because this is a world where there are commonly shared interests: political, economic, cultural, military. And those need to make alliances supporting and that has always pros and cons and those pros and cons particularly where member states make with other global and regional partners need to be discussed and to be framed in a way that they don't have consequences negative consequences to them otherwise we cannot rule out border issues of security and military cooperation Uh, about the advantage, I talked about this uh, original presentation, uh, this diplomatic game, activity, uh, direct contribution training, capacity building for the judicial uh, military forces, but also Somalia and Tokyo, of course, uh, preparation. This is the advantage, but the disadvantage, disadvantage is it's managing rivalry between uh, major military power. It's complicated. Uh, management of... of uh -huh. Management of incident. Uh -huh. Sometimes uh, incident between them and sometimes accident. Uh -huh. Remember, we see the that escaped from a uh, Spanish ship uh, more in the fourth of the city without closing our damage. Uh, loss of income for the country. This is another disadvantage. You know, uh, those foreign military presidents, they don't pay tax, they uh, don't pay uh, yeah, taxes. But this is uh, lost uh, for Djibouti. Uh, uh, for Djibouti. Uh, their contribution, their financial contribution, is less than 10% of GDP of Djibouti, something like 8 or 9. So uh, the, the primary interest of Djibouti is not uh, financial, as you, you know, and environmental and health consequences also. This is the other disadvantage of the presence of those uh, foreign military. Uh, but sometimes also the diplomatic misunderstood with the uh, neighbor country, countries. Uh, had clearly said you had Kuwait said Mecca is good. While in all level, regional level, hotter, hotter. So I don't tell them what. What then I could do? What then I could do in 
Em kau nak kalah na China, mereka yang kalah na cukup cukup juga ni kuli kuli dari base. Somali, Amerika ni, ama Ethiopia, ada duka sugar ni, wah mah ada musa ni ya. Soma, cukup cukup awak tan alam kalau yang terap sini hari, leh ya fakta sana jiran, itu ramo hadir lah saya hangkari. Lakin, hatta na sulit baca sahara. أمني جود دجانك سلوت بقى سعر الجار كيسة أو دوادد ولا لهين أنت أنا شغلة ما أنا كم بسيط خلاص بحاجة دوادد ولا لهين أنا أنا كم بحمل وبدر دجانه أي نوت على أي نفر تسكو في فيرنا تروح بنا وصبر نش نفر تسكو في فيرنا تروح بنا وصبر نش دي بتوين كي عند وان هاي وان وان دي بتوين بدل ما نوي يلا دي بتوين كي حدود دوادد ده حدود ده كده حيلة كل ما نحل أنت دي بتوين نوت على أنت أنت كهذا ده الجنبي أو مال كله مال مال يرفع ديان كله أو أو ما درك الكهلة إنه وحي ونا كهلة إنه هي وحي دبا أنا وان حد ذي كرينا تي مرة دبا توين بدل بانو تعلم إن وحي ويا عرب كأن أنا وما تصار رجل انتجريشن رجل انتجريشن إن عرب كسار ويا ضد كان حدوده هلا كلا حدا بدي عاده حدوده هلا كلا حدا ضد كلا كانوا قوي إن وحي كل جدوبه مرة كل سكول صوت دوبه لما بقوله مليون مني صما مرة ويا إن الله شايك يستو أو هذه اللي يدا دمل بالسكوي من نقول بندن تيسة جاركا يدفع هذه لدا نقول بندن تدفع وردن جود ما لنا دن تجود وحلاقة الله ناشر الانترست بارك الله رجال الانترست وين ما كان الله مل بالسكوي من ناي وحلاقة هاللي رجال انتجريشن نقول بود كيس يدفع نسافر وانا دفع ديو بركي دبك عيوب ور ناش واحد جونا رجال ليفل ما جونا مجونو بلا ترى الماء إيش وحنا فر لما وضنا وش هكذا سنة ما تضبضي وضنا إيجا تقصي بتم ركب مارتي تري على جرهم ورا أنك هذا الله محن وضنا دجانا هن حن وضنا مجرو قف كوره one two three ويا نو والبنا مركو ربو إنه ما درك تي تيسة هل كوره سو مر صدق كل كوس قادر رجع الانترست ورجع الانترست ومر بور بور ما تكش غينيس ورجع الانترست ومر ما لقش غينيس مرك هدي أنك تجي وين إيدانتي أنا قبيل كم بانهاي، أنا وحنا هاي ما رير كم بانهاي، أنا وحنا هاي محي بانهاي، هذا كتير من كوم، لا با، هذا كتير من إننا ناشر إنترست هذا جيس كافر كان ده فكر يقوله، أنا كم بس أسكو جيدا دونا، مارك اللي جي ما ده لبوا ده نوصل استوى ده ندي حديدي بس بس استوى، وصوم ما إنت دبوا حندرينه، إن على هذه قبيلة إسنا، أما دمار رير إسنا، أما إدانة تيو كده ترت، أما على إسكو دري رماد ركت في هذا نقوم يدوا باي متى ترى ده يتوبي أو قوربي دي كور إسمه ده قطمة إسا. أما قبيل دمائم تو قبيل يقولنا تحرفت إن ماش بتر دعوت مسا أما هن نقطة صومالي وقبيل قبيل ناس كده رأي أما هن نقطة هذا جبوتي ومارك حين يعني قيبة كم ده يتوب يتوب يو ناس كده هيستو صومالي عفر ناس كده هيستو هل كان ناس كده ندي ده نجمش كده يعني عفر مارتينا ما أنا وين أكون ده رادمان مرة كمان واحد صون نقطة وحيابه إذا تي تي قصة ناس ناس كده رأي واحد مدمان هل كان جونو سجع شنو دي لجو سجع شنو دي دور ده دعي دور ده كلاي مني لكن دعالة ده دعي ولا بيدو دي قبيلة سبعين مركب أبوي واحد أبا تاس أو كله أو مارت هاليس قلي نيسا يوم كهاليس بيكش سوما جريتان كي توبي هاليس كله سنة دي وده بيجي معه حكروا هالنا توبي أبو بلا تمين أبو بلا تمين هذا كلا ده سو جيس كافر بدر ما بدر بوه ما غورمي سدا سلك جريتان كي قيبك سودان مالين كستي وحلس كده در عاصمة سوما عاصمة هبين كي منا صور ده باش على ارتجال إيجا توه حيس مالين كس عاصمة ده كده در عاصمة ده سمي جريتان دور بلا ده كده در رأي مجر زاد يدخل نور بنا استعمالها دروني يا رضا الله استعمالها عاصمة دي خرطوم حلورين جري خرطوم وجيجا عب بهذه النقطة خلاص وبنها وبدي يا رضا الله سكوي استعمالها عاصمة دي حلورين سكوت الرهيب بتغني بدين تلاقي وين بعض بعض سودان مجرت سودان صد الصلاة ده كدي بالها هذا الحين دونا ماين سودان خلاص خرطوم عاصمة دي ولا ما بيجي وحويل سومالي وين كدي عقال وين يجو هيك مثل دورش دعيس حيا بقى يقول بقى صعود الملك هذا بقى صعود وين وروح يا بقى هنصون نقضي وحوب بقى هن تاعي رجنال لا يضرب إن لقش شيء يستوون له ده وروح السيدية من غورت هنا ده كي أقوي أنا دي نقول بقبيل كيس دبل دوكس إنه كي كسون غضو ولا ده ورمحان هوري هلو أنا أنا بقول ترى إلا روح إنك سياسي هو حوي إنه ده كخلق قبضة ده كيسا وجود تقول سو فرنا يا شيء وينا ده لو وجود مرة إحنا أنا بس كسون غضو نور نور ده كي أقوي أنا ده تغيرتا ده كي معروف محمد ده بنا عم علماء عنه قط وده قمة عنه قط ولا ده وردي جود هم بعدين اسمه كجر ناي ده ما 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 هل كم بيخدع ما تنا بري هل كم كده بري هل ما تشوفنا أنتوا حلو ودول دومي فكحوا هنا أنا أبو فكر نو هنا شيء كسر نو سؤال لي سويديو إن ناشنال إنترست أول دفاعون لا تعرف 
نال داف اول ایرا دوام بده مگر تو حسب بیگیر و باسیر کن ادوا سنت So I think the epicenter of the main recommendation that all the panelists have suggested was security, 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 in, in order to enhance the trade between Somaliland and Ethiopia. So my question is, how best do you think that Somaliland can make use and incorporate the Ethiopian recommendation to enhance uh, its trade in reference to the pact? the National Authorization Act signed by the U.S. How best can Somaliland work with Ethiopia to enhance its collaboration on that pact so that they can enhance together the trade uh, that they are going to have in the future? Thank you. So, I want to ask Mr. Adam, and I want to ask Adam, I want to ask Adam, I want to ask Adam, وحقوق سودگی یا حیرت که سیاستید یک واقع امنی سو ایگی. هد دوا هدی ات کسر کری سودگو من هچکی سیاستید امبا حیرت که گی بتری ات کسر تو حدود ده مسامین کرا این نگهتیم بکتی مکوکی نیکرا دل که اگه یه نواد داده یه دیریس که اگه سده حلاب مسامین کرا و نگهتیم بکتی مکوکی نیکرا. يعني أولا نفضل نتكلم باللغة الإنجليزية لأنه اللي الحاضرين في أجنبين بالخالص لأنه نتكلم باللغة الإنجليزية للأسف يعني. I think the conflict in Yemen is still continuing. It means that the conflict in Yemen, what is happening in these days or before 2011 is that it has its, its own structural cause, proximate cause, and triggering cause. So the real solution to bring peace and stability in Yemen is going to have a sort of uh, to solve the structural problem of that country. And in order to solve that structural problem, all actors they should have to sit and discuss the points among the uh, points, which is a very critical kind of issue, will be the unification of Yemen, the South and the North Yemen. You know, during the unification, there was a sort of moralities, how they are going to integrate and unite. Then, during that time, during the unification, you know, it's not based on they had been agreed upon the details of the unification. So I can consider that as a structural cause of the conflict. Then, still, they are not coming to the table and solve their problems, and the conflict in Yemen is persistently exists. Um, concerning the um, the Taifia, I don't consider that the conflict in Yemen as if um, the conflict in between the Shia and Sunni. Maybe after a time being, I mean, uh, as a beginning, I consider it as if um, it is a sort of breeding military force by agitation, agitating a sort of sectarian kind of uh, propaganda. But the Yemenis are one, they are living together, whether they are from Shia or from Sunnah, they live together, they don't have any difference. I have been there for about nine years, and the Shia and the Sunni, they intermarry each other, they live like what we are living here in, in Yemen, I mean in uh, Somaliland, sorry. So I don't think there is a sort of uh, critical problem in the respect of Taifia, 
that if the conflict is going to be continuing in such a way, the political elites, military elites, and the other uh, interest groups, they might twin it into a sort of sectarian. Uh, it can be developed in, in a sort of sectarian kind of conflict. But nowadays, I don't think it has nothing to do with a sectarian kind of conflict. Um, and I prefer, I prefer that the al I mean the Ansar Allah, they should have to be as stakeholders in the politics of Yemen, and then they should have to sit with other actors which are actively working in, in Yemen, and they can solve their problems either with Saudis or with the Western countries as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, like my brother, for raising that question. Like I don't know, like as Somalilanders, you might know well, or Somaliland government officials might know well. I'm always very frank and straight. I I I don't think the this idea of trade agreement relates to the Somaliland Partnership Pact in the in the in the first place because. I don't even understand like uh, why Somaliland. What what interests us? What benefits actually Somaliland has seen in that in that document, which clearly states that America, the United States of America, would continue to promote a one Somali, one Somalia policy. And where whereas the intent here is that, like it's, it's very much closer to the two-state solution between Israel and uh, Palestine. You know, the Somalilanders would want to be an independent state. They were in 1916, right, June 26, 26, when they waged their independence and then married the, the Mogadishu in, in July 1st and then separated, divorced. And that does, that does, does not clearly stipulate in the document. It doesn't have anything to say with uh, trade cooperations between Ethiopia and Somalia. Of course, it gives uh, rooms clearly that Somaliland will have and enjoy the, the, the presence of the State Department, the Ministry of Defenses, and the USAID, which technically means a de facto kind of recognition, but it doesn't clearly state that. And in many of the provisions, it says the United States of America would stick to promoting the agenda of one Somalia policy. So I don't, I don't understand what the, the, the Somaliland Republic has seen in that agreement. Otherwise, uh, to me, the provision is more inclined to give opportunities for the United States, which aims to get an access to and consolidate oil concessions in this particular region, and also do a lot more and get a ground to contain the expansion of China in the Horn of Africa and in this region, but puts more obligation on Somaliland to protect United States interests in Taiwan. I'm not saying that you guys do not need to have a relationship with Taiwan. That's up to you to, to decide. But in the provision, according to me, I've seen nothing that, that benefits Somaliland per se and its relationship with its long-lasting partner. With relates to the Somaliland partnership part in the, in the, in the first place. Because I don't even understand like, why Somaliland, what, what interest is. What benefits actually Somaliland has seen in that in that document, which clearly states that America, the United States of America, would continue to promote a one Somali, one Somalia policy. And where, whereas the intent here is that that this is very much closer to the two-state solution between Israel and uh, Palestine. You know, the Somalilanders would want to be an independent state. They were in 1960, right? June 26, 26, when they waged their independence, and then married the, the Mogadishu in, in July 1st, and then separated, divorced. And that does, that does, does not clearly stipulate in the document. It doesn't have anything to say with uh, trade cooperation between Ethiopia and Somalia. Of course, it gives uh, rooms clearly that Somaliland will have and enjoy the, the, the presence of the State Department, the Ministry of Defense, and the U.S which technically means a de facto kind of recognition, but it doesn't clearly state that. And in many of the provisions, it says the United States of America would stick to promoting the agenda of one Somalia policy. 
So I don't, I don't understand what uh, the, the Somaliland Republic has seen in that argument. Otherwise, uh, to me, the provision is more inclined to give opportunities for the United States, which aims to get an access to and consolidate oil concessions in this particular region, and also do a lot more to get the ground to contain the expansion of China in the Horn of Africa and in this region, but puts more obligation on Somaliland to protect United States interests in Taiwan. I'm not saying uh, you guys do not need to have a relationship with Taiwan. That's up to you to decide. But in the provision, according to me, I've seen nothing that, that benefits Somaliland per se and its relationship with its long lasting partner with Ethiopia. I don't see even, I don't call even Ethiopia and Somaliland department there. We are younger brother and elder brother, so sister, younger sister and elder sister. That's why Ethiopia has always been behind Somaliland since the start of the SNA movement that uh, maintain Somalia to be a de facto independent states. Economic relationships, political relationships, military relationships, security relationships have always been there. But that is changing particularly right after the signing of that uh, partnership. And with America getting access to the Berbera ports, financially they will get some, you guys may get some, some economic benefits. But you are staying in a volatile region where Ethiopia has a big interest in Somaliland, where Kenya, Eritrea, Djibouti has a big interest in so Somaliland. Yeah, let, let, me, let, yeah, let me conclude. So, I, I, in the first place, I see no relationship uh, of that partnership part, uh, regulating any kind of trade relationship between Ethiopia and Somaliland. So, I think we can continue the discussion afterwards. Thank you.
First of all, I will ask what are the motivations or motives behind the U.S. and Gulf states involvement in Bilbao? That's the state of politica, political affairs we have in the world. I'm talking, I was, I was responding to the question, but no one is listening. You know, yeah, that's the, that's the problem. I mean, like, it's very tough to answer this question. I mean, definitely they will have some political and economic interests. Like, you know, this is stretching from the port of Hormuz in, in Iran to the Suez Canal. You know, this is a big maritime zone, maritime area where the majority of the world's, the bulk of the world's trade activity happens. And this is where we have uh, the most, the, the biggest challenges that threaten the global collective security happen. Drug trafficking, uh, human trafficking, arms dealers, and the proliferation of arms from the different countries that we have in the region. Uh, so we have trade, cooperation, we have strategic alliances, those are the most important trade routes, right and trade routes where we have uh, strategic choke points globally. So there, there always remains an interest in this part of the world. So there is always a competition to control, to have a control over this maritime zone to safeguard national and interests of strategic partners, be it America, be it the US, China, with Taiwan, with anyone who is interested in this particular part of the area. So, uh, we, we could expect that. Since the partition of Africa during the Berlin Congress, when we have a bipolar world order, and now with emerging new economic and military powers, and the world changing multipolar, Africa has always remained at the recipient of it. I mean, I'm not, blame, I'm not shifting the blame to the rest of the world because I believe that there is a lot that we haven't done to ensure that we are the best competitors, we are the best uh, the countries who can, who can, we can ensure a safer, a better, and economically stronger region in this part of uh, the world. So uh, there, is no answer, there is no clear answer, I would say. But the issue of building a military base in Barbara came very recently, particularly after the signing of the Somaliland partnership part between Somaliland and the US. And I can understand the intentions. Somaliland has always been here to get a recognition from the international community that I expect and I, I believe so. But also Somaliland needs to have something to offer to its neighbors rather than bringing in inviting foreign military powers and bases around. Because the security of Ethiopia is well, first and foremost dependent on a stable Somaliland. And likewise, without a strong and stable democracy and security and peace in Ethiopia, Somali it's very, it will be very difficult for Somaliland to be an independent, recognized and stable democracy. So, very difficult to answer this question. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Samuel. Now it is we have one part and it is cooperation and answer session. So please uh, you have the right to ask your question to either all of uh, panelists or only one of them. So just name if you are asking a specific uh yes. So we have any question. Yeah, yeah, no love is yeah. Okay, Um, I'm, 
Gus. Uh, this is fantastic panelists. Actually, I appreciate your specialist and the fact that you got a lot. Particularly, I like it how Ambassador surprised the Putin and Putin factories on this military presence, military presence in the region. Uh, yes, I agree with you. Actually, this video is very complex, but always we discuss on the interest of the external powers in the region. But my question is. Okay, can we analyze the issue from the interest of our end? With a regional end, I mean, uh, with the interest of our region, can we come up with a regional agenda that we can negotiate with the global powers to, uh, to deal with our interest without retaining our potential and wealth by, uh, instead of uh, coming up, I mean, uh, negotiating the powers collectively with our interest as regional agenda? Thank you. My question is almost to our boss. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Farhan. I would like to ask uh, the panelists uh, only one quick question. Uh, you have mentioned that to have the military presence in the one of Africa, that the institutions and the government, specifically the government institutions, will have the capacity to have regulations and uh, rules that they can have uh, facilitate that military basis. So my question is that we have that kind of capacity uh, to regulate uh, both internationally and locally the effect of the military basis uh, from the powers for the So we are not going to live in uh, the island. So having all this in mind, we should have to understand that either from the regional states or superpowers or the newcomers from the Middle East, do we have a common interest in this geopolitical location of the world of Africa? Yes, indeed, we have a common interest maintaining peace and stability of this region is very crucial to every of us, whether we are from the Horn of Africa, whether we are from the superpowers, becoming new uh, regional powers like Emirati or Saudi Arabia. Indeed, those who are coming from uh, I mean, the international powers, they do have their own conflict of interest. The same thing, they do have conflicts of interest between the Gulf states like the Saudis and the Gulf states, as well like uh, United Arab Emirates. They are running for their uh, geopolitical interest in this region. So we should have to think and craft what we are having a common interest towards this this region, whether they are from the international actors, regional actors within, interstate actors in the, within the Horn of Africa. Then, having in mind this common interest, and balancing the ramification based on the 
economy, political, and security impact. Then we should have to work on, as I have mentioned before, nowadays we are not going to work alone. Unless maybe if we are going to uh, craft a sort of uh, an African, okay, we should have to strengthen our regional gathering like we got. Different uh, discussions have been delivered yesterday about regional the strengths of the IGAD, the strengths of the other uh, groupings. So we should have to strengthen this institution as much as we can, and there is also so many possibilities to strengthen. Rather than working hard in our differences, we should have to come across with all our common interests, even within states those who are in the world of Africa. Then we should have to send the regional mechanism as well as with the other actors which are coming for the sake of their strategic interests. Whether we like or not, as I have mentioned before, uh, the coming 21, I mean this 21 century, there are a lot of consumption by the community. If the consumption is going to be increased, it means that this international trade is going to have in a big kind of, in a big kind of volume, which is going to be transported to this region. It means that we should, those actors, they should have to maintain peace and stability in this area. So, they, we should have to consider as stakeholders. Based on, and we should have to also uh, share the ramifications, what is going on if something happened around this area as well with the other actors. Having said this, is a undercom IU, IU Swan, Abdat, the Kamaru, the Northern Army. Shukran. Thank you. I would only briefly respond to the question. I think it was raised by Cass. Yes, that's, that's a possibility. Because I, I myself was recently uh, reported in an initiative which was launched by IGAD to uh, kind of put uh, some uh, framework on issues related to transboundary uh, security issues within the IGAD member states in the whole of uh, Africa and also to discuss and regulate and create in which shapes are framed in the form of uh, aiming at framing a kind of uh, framework whereby all IGAD member states will submit and subscribe to. But briefly saying like we cannot rule out completely the uh, the broader issues of security and military cooperation. This can be discussed for their merits and demerits and agreed the uh, terms can be agreed. That's that's what I can say. Because this is a world where there are commonly shared interests, political, economic, cultural, military, and those need to make alliances accordingly. And that has always pros and cons. And those pros and cons, particularly where member states make with other global and regional partners, need to be discussed and to be framed in a way that they don't have consequences, negative consequences to them. Otherwise, we cannot rule out border issues of security and military cooperation. About the knowledge, I talked about this uh, already on the presentation. Uh, this diplomatic game, security, uh, direct contribution training, capacity building for the Russian uh, military forces, but also for the Somalia and Tokyo of uh, cooperation. This is an advantage, but a disadvantage. Japan, it's managing everybody. 
is in uh, much of different power. It's complicated also. Uh, management of hostility. Uh, management of incident accident also. Sometimes uh, incident is there, and sometimes accident. Uh, and remember, we see that a missile that's captured from a uh, Spanish ship more in the course of the city without causing any damage. Loss uh, of impact contributes. This is another advantage. You know, uh, those foreign military presence uh, doesn't pay tax, uh, they doesn't pay uh, their taxes. But this is uh, lost uh, for the booty uh, 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 Their contribution, their financial contribution, is less than 10% 10, 10 of GDP, which is something like 8 or 9. So, uh, the primary interest of GDP is not the financial. And environmental and health consequences. This is the other advantage of the presence of those foreign uh, people. Uh, but sometimes also, the problematic is at their school with the ليكون طبعاً، <تصفيق> in the way of Arab and regional integration. But as you regional Alcassan, Dr. Kodua, American, but the other Kodua, American, the Stalin, and the Kalapo. But the school also do not follow the men. But the way in our Russian case, or a deal with the men, but a swimmer, no more than the teaser. That you وخلقنا <تصفيق> Of course, one, two, three, we are. You know, but I'm not poor, you know, I'm not a teacher. Of course, I'm not a teacher. 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 ولكن ولكن يجب ان يكون هناك 
Well, the last round of questions, so I know more question than us. Well, sorry, two Ali. Sorry, three. Is that how we see it?
I think the um, conflict in Yemen is still continuing. It means that the conflict in Yemen, what is happening in this days or before 2011, is that it has its, its own structural cause, approximate cause, and trigger. They live like was we are living here in, in Yemen. I mean in uh, Somalia, I'm sorry. So I don't think there is a sort of uh, critical problem in the respect of the idea that if the conflict is going to be continuing in such a way, the political elites, the military elites, and the other 
uh, interest groups, they might turn it into a sort of sectarian. Uh, it can be developed in a sort of sectarian kind of conflict, but not in this. I don't think it has nothing to do with uh, a sectarian kind of conflict. Um, and I prefer, I prefer that the Arbutis, I mean the Ansar Allah, they should have to be as stakeholders in the politics of Yemen, and then they should have to see with the other actors who are actually working in, in Yemen, and they can solve their problems either with Saudis or with the Western countries as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, my brother, for raising that question. I don't know, as Somali leaders, you might know well, or Somali government officials might know well. I'm always very frank and straight. I, I, I don't think the, this idea of trade agreement relates to the Somali partnership part in the, in, the, in the first place, because I don't even understand like, why Somaliland, what, what interest is, what benefits actually Somaliland has seen in that, in that document, which clearly states that America, the United States of America, would continue to promote a one Somali, one Somalia policy. And where, whereas the intent here is that, that this is very much closer to the two-state solution between Israel and the Palestine. You know, the Somalilanders would want to be an independent state. They were in 1916, right? June 26, 26, when they waged their independence. And then married the, the Mogadishu in, in July 1st. And then separate, divorced. And that does, that does, does not clearly stipulate in the document. It doesn't have anything to say with uh, trade cooperation between Ethiopia and Somalia. Of course, it gives uh, rooms clearly that Somaliland will have and enjoy the, the, the presence of the State Department, the Ministry of Defense, and the U.S which technically means a de facto kind of recognition, but it doesn't clearly state that. And in many of the provisions, it says the United States of America would stick to promoting the agenda of one Somali police. So I don't, I don't understand what uh, the Somaliland Republic has seen in that argument. Otherwise, uh, to me, the provision is more inclined to give opportunities for the United States, which aims to get an access to and consolidate oil concessions in this particular region and also do a lot more and get the ground to contain the expansion of China in the Horn of Africa and in this region but puts more obligation on Somaliland to protect the United States interests in Taiwan. I'm not saying uh, you guys do not need to have a relationship with Taiwan. That's up to you to decide. But in the provision, according to me, I've seen nothing that, that benefits Somaliland per se and its relationship with its long lasting partner with Ethiopia. I don't see even, I don't call even Ethiopia and Somaliland department. They are, we are younger brother and elder brother, so sister, younger sister and elder sister. That's why Ethiopia has always been behind Somaliland since the start of the SMA movement that uh, maintained Somaliland to be a de facto independent state. Economic relationships, political relationships, military relationships, security relationships have always been there. But that is changing, particularly right after the signing of that uh, partnership. And with America getting access to the Berbera ports, financially, they will get some, you guys may get some, some economic benefits. But you are staying in a volatile region where Ethiopia has a big interest in Somalia, where Kenya, Eritrea, Djibouti has a big interest in Somalia. And you have... Yeah, yeah, let, let, me, let, yeah, let me conclude. So, I, I, in the first place, I see no relationship uh, of that partnership uh, regulating any kind of trade relationship between Ethiopia and Somalia. So I think we can continue the discussion afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Oh, 
Thank you for your attention and, and patience. 